Thank you, Mr. Chair, and congratulations to all the witnesses. Mr. Bondi, I think I'll spend my five minutes with you. Um, you have you've have significant experience in a really important region of the world, and I want to ask you about a couple of issues dealing with the U.S.-Bahrain relationship. So first, um, Bahrain has been a good partner in the United States in, in our evacuation of Afghans. They've been very helpful in, the, in being the home of our fifth fleet. Bahrain has also had some serious concerns about human rights issues, um, mass arrests in 2011, and it's a country where the leadership is a kind of a minority Sunni population that is in leadership, but about 70% of the population is Shia. Talk about what you could do, should you be confirmed, to promote uh, more attention to human rights in Bahrain. Senator, thank you very much for the question. Uh, indeed, as you say, uh, there has been uh, traditionally a fair bit of uh, friction and tension within uh, uh, the Kingdom of Bahrain uh, between the various communities. Uh, if, you, uh, if we were to rewind 10 years ago, as you said, when, when there was uh, quite a bit of uh, strife in the country, uh, we would have to say the trend lines since then have been exceedingly positive. Uh, indeed, uh, the, uh, the government of Bahrain has used a new legislative mechanism uh, called the Alternative Sentencing Law to release over 3,500 convicts who were in prison, uh, and they have now been able to uh, depart the prison and uh, find other ways to sort of uh, get on with their lives. Additionally, Senator, there is a new uh, juvenile justice law which uh, elevates the age from 15 to 18 of who can be tried as a, uh, as a majority age individual. And uh, that has resulted, in fact, in uh, some people between uh, the ages of 15 and 18 really uh, serving kind of very shortened sentences in juvenile detention centers rather than as full-blown prisoners. But, uh, but Senator, you, you, you absolutely have hit the nail on the head. Uh, promoting human rights is absolutely essential tenet of uh, the administration's foreign policy. And if confirmed, I will seek to use several fora that we already have established, uh, either through the strategic dialogue or in regular quarterly meetings between uh, the embassy and an interministerial uh, grouping in Manama to continue to promote the values and the interests that we have with, with regard to human rights. Mr. Bondi, thank you for that. Switching to another topic, um, in the last couple of days, something positive happened. Foreign Minister uh, Lapid of Israel visited Bahrain to open the Israeli um, embassy there. Very, very positive. I, I was a uh, supporter of the Abraham Accords when they were announced for a couple of reasons. I feel like the normalization of relations between nations in the region and Israel it was actually a public expression of what was already sort of going on sub rosa. And rather than have it be sub rosa, why not put it on the table that we're, we're now going to work together on issues of common cause. A normalized diplomatic relationship is not a good housekeeping seal of approval, but it's just a, a way of having channels of dialogue and communication and normal relations which are beneficial. But the other reason I strongly support the Abrahamic Accords is I've been just so discouraged about the absence of progress toward a two-state solution in Israel. I visited Israel for the first time in 1998, uh, went to the West Bank as well, and frankly, in the 23 years since then, the situation uh, has moved farther away from the peace uh, between an Israel and Palestine living side by side that we contemplated when we recognized the state of Israel at its foundation during the Truman presidency. I view the Abrahamic Accords as giving uh, uh, nations in the region kind of skin in the game. Their, their populations want them to do things to promote uh, a successful resolution in a Palestinian nation that lives peacefully side by side with Israel. You were the charge at the UAE. The UAE was one of the other uh, nations that uh, normalized relations with Israel in this way. What, what do you see as prospects of building upon the Abraham Accords to uh, break the stalemate that's existed for so long and find a path forward to the peace that we've longed for for decades? Thank you, Senator, for that uh, very important question and for your uh, comments on the situation. Uh, indeed, the Abraham Accords are a, they represent a strategic change for the region. 
Uh, and in fact, in my career, I also served in Jordan uh, when uh, Jordan made peace with Israel. So I view uh, strengthening and expanding uh, uh, the relationship of two very good friends and allies, Bahrain and Israel, uh, as a, a very important bookend to my own career with the Foreign Service. But I, I believe there is great potential for uh, those two friends to build their relationship all the way across the spectrum, and I will devote my energy and creativity, if confirmed, to helping them to do exactly that, Senator. Uh, Mr. Chair, I yield back. Uh, thank you, Senator. 